Good morning, or afternoon, or whenever you're watching this. I'm Chuck Barlow, and this is High School Sunday School for Crossgates United Methodist Church during the pandemic. The idea here is for us to do some fairly short, and by that I'm really hoping to hit 10, 15 minutes, fairly short videos um, to take the place of Sunday School class as best they can. Uh, you are welcome to watch this, obviously, whoever you are. But please keep in mind that these videos are really intended for 9th through 12th grade students at Crossgates United Methodist Church, Brandon, Mississippi. So that's our, that's our core audience. That's who I'm going to try to teach to. I'm teaching to an empty room. Uh, Faith East, my, my, my trusty and indispensable assistant, is uh, our camera person today. Uh, but other than that, it's an empty room, so it's kind of weird. We're going to start today with an introductory lesson, and this is really aimed at our ninth graders. It's really for our ninth graders who are just now coming into our class. So if you've been in my class before, or you've seen one of my introductory sessions before, you can skip this and go to the next video. Um, but I want, especially for the ninth graders, anybody else who's just coming into the class, I want you to feel comfortable coming into the class. Um, I, I don't want anybody to be scared or intimidated. Um, and I, I know, you know, some, sometimes it's weird coming into a class that's full of older students um, and with, you know, an old guy up here teaching. So I want you to feel comfortable and I want to tell you a little bit about what we're going to do and how it might be a little different than what you've done in Sunday school before, especially different from when you were in children's Sunday school because you're not a child anymore. And that's, that's really what I want to get through to you today, is that I'm going to ask you to, to deal with some topics and some stories and some ideas that I probably wouldn't have when you were a child because you're not a child anymore. And I'm going to ask you to think for yourself. And that's something that we don't always do of children, okay? So big lesson for today, you're not in fifth grade Sunday school anymore. You're in high school Sunday school. So let's just give you a little bit of an introduction. Uh, the purpose of the class, obviously, it's our high school Sunday school class. Um, it is meant, th these videos are meant to be like a class. I'm trying to make them as personal as possible. They're not professional. They're not going to be edited. If I screw up, I screw up. We'll talk about it later. Others are welcome to watch, but please do remember who our core audience is. Uh, the scope in this class, in high school, we focus on the Hebrew Scriptures or the Old Testament. Those two terms mean the same thing. Now growing up, most of us always called it the Old Testament, and, and that's okay, but these are the Hebrew Scriptures and the Scriptures of the Hebrew people. And to me, it's more respectful to, to use that term, Hebrew Scriptures, but it's, it's the Old Testament in your Bible, okay, if you look at your Bible. Why do we focus on that? Well, if you think about it, by doing that, we're studying what Jesus studied. And we'll talk about this a lot. You know, when you, when you grow up in church, sometimes you think, well, Jesus had a Bible, right? And maybe a little bit of a light bulb goes off if you sit there and think, well, no, Jesus didn't have the whole Bible because obviously a lot of the Bible is about Jesus or was written after uh, Jesus lived, was crucified, was resurrected, returned to heaven. So Jesus didn't have the Bible the way we think of it. It wasn't a book that he could pull down off the shelf and read. He did have the Hebrew Scriptures. Um, and we're not exactly sure which Hebrew Scriptures he had access to. That could be different in different Jewish communities. But being that he was Jesus, um, he was an expert in the Hebrew Scriptures. And so when you read the stories that Jesus tells or when you read the things that Jesus says, he often refers back to the Hebrew Scriptures. Uh, Isaiah, one of the prophets in particular, Isaiah is in our Old Testament. Well, that is a book that obviously Jesus studied when he was your age and younger and older, all right? So we're not studying this just because it's some kind of dusty history. We're, we're studying it because it is part of the foundation that a Christian needs to understand what Christ is saying, to understand what Jesus is saying, to understand all of the Bible and all of the Word of God that God has given us. Okay, It doesn't just start in the New Testament. Uh, it started long before that 
and many books before that, um, way back in the Hebrew Scriptures. So we study it to study what Jesus studied, to learn more, to understand. Um, biblical literacy is another reason. What does that mean? That just means you ought to know what's in the Bible. Um, if, you, if you read, again, you read stories of Jesus, he constantly goes back, alludes back, talks about characters in the Old Testament. Well, if you don't know who the characters in the Old Testament were, how are you going to understand what Jesus is saying? When you start reading the, the letters of Paul, the epistles of Paul, he, he loves to talk about Abraham. If you don't know anything about Abraham, how are you going to understand what Paul is saying in Romans, the, the, the letter of Romans, for instance? Um, if you read the book of Hebrews, the book of Hebrews is really built around talking about several Old Testament characters. Don't know who they are. How are you going to understand the book of Hebrews? A side benefit is that when you go through high school, college, especially if you do a lot of, of reading of literature, if you end up being an English major or a history major, or any, I mean, you're reading all these books, other books other than the Bible, books that have been written more recently, constantly refer back to biblical stories and biblical characters. So it's hard for you to know, to understand those books if you have no clue who Abraham was and the story is talking about Abraham. So that's another, that's what liter, by literacy we mean being able to read the Bible and understand it and just know the basics that are there. <clears throat> I can tell you an interesting story one time about how I got through basically my entire graduate school career just because I knew the Bible stories. That's for a different time. We usually take a chronological or timeline approach. <clears throat> I, I had a problem when I was young because I'd come to Sunday school and we would kind of just drop into different parts of the Bible. So we may be in the Old Testament for a couple of Sundays and then a couple of Sundays later we were all the way into the New Testament and everything got jumbled up in my brain and, and I couldn't really tell you what happened first and what happened later. To try to avoid that, we, I, I'll draw out a timeline and we'll actually talk about how things work, how things, what went first, what went second, and, and how things work as best we can understand it with the Bible. This is called a chronological approach. Now, this is our ACT word of the day today, and um, I, I love to try to give you a word every lesson um, where, you know, you might run into this in your reading in high school. You might run into it when you're taking the ACT or the SAT. Chronological really just means in the order of time, okay? Uh, chrono or chronos, one of those good old Greek Latin words means time and you know that anything that's got a logos or logical behind it, biological, anything like that means the study of, right? So it's really just the study of time or how things marched forward in time. Um, this really helped me when somebody finally did this for me in college, so I'm hoping it'll help you. Okay, <clears throat> maturity. Let's talk about your maturity a little bit. Uh, like I said, you're not in fifth grade anymore, right? When you come into this class, I'm not going to dumb things down for you. And I'll give you an example of that. It's not as scary as it sounds. But the Old Testament in particular, the Hebrew Scriptures, um, the New Testament as well, there are a lot of rough stories. There are a lot of hard topics. There, there are, there, there's a lot of adult stuff, okay, in the Hebrew Scriptures. Now, I'm going to treat you as an adult as long as you'll let me. I've never had a problem with this, and I don't want to talk about things that bother you or make you uncomfortable. But you just need to know going in that from the very beginning of the Bible, of the Bible, these are these are real people that we're studying. Okay, they're not perfect people. They do things that are bad. They lie. They cuss. They steal. They kill. They commit murder. Um, they have sex with people they're not supposed to have sex with. They commit adultery. Okay, now I, there, I just said something you probably had never heard in Sunday school before. That's fine. You're a ninth grader now, and you've got the Internet. So I'm not really worried about talking about stuff like that with you. We will do it in a sensitive way, and if it ever starts to bother and you, you let me know, you let Faith know, you let Cam or Trey or one of the other leaders of our church know, and we'll adjust what we're doing. But it hadn't seemed to bother anybody so far. But if it's in the Bible, we're going to talk about it. Let me give you an example. When I was teaching, there was one time I was teaching, um, and it, I think it was about 
fifth grade or something like that. And I had a book, a, a Sunday school book that I was supposed to teach from. And the story was about when Saul, who was the king, was chasing David, who was going to be the next king. And they were enemies at this point. David was hiding in a cave up in the hills. Saul, they were searching everywhere for David. Saul had to go to the bathroom. So, yeah, he's king, but he still had to go to the bathroom. So he went in the cave to go to the bathroom. Well, guess who was hiding in the back of this cave? David. So it's a real interesting story, and it's a story we'll study later on. Well, in this book that I was supposed to be teaching from, the Sunday school book, okay, it said, Saul went into the cave to take a nap. And I read that, and I went back, and I read the Bible story again. The Bible doesn't say anything about Saul taking a nap. The Bible says Saul had to relieve himself. Saul had to go to the bathroom. Apparently, they were afraid that, you know, all the fifth graders in the room would just, <laughs> you know, he had to go, you know, to the bathroom. Okay, I'm not going to treat you like that. If it says he had to go to the bathroom, I'm going to tell you he had to go to the bathroom. If it tells you that he committed adultery, I'm going to tell you he committed adultery. It, whatever, okay? So, you need to act like you're old enough to hear this stuff. You are. You're smart enough, and you're exposed to it all the time, so don't, 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 don't treat me like your children because I know you're not, okay? Um, I'm going to ask you to think critically. What that means is don't believe something just because I say it. Don't believe it just because um, uh, Pastor Trey says it or Cam says it or Faith says it. You need to think for yourself. Now, when I do that, I've got a danger box here because you know what? You may end up disagreeing with me or with Cam or with Faith or with Pastor Trey. And that's okay, as long as you do it respectfully. We're, we are a community of faith. We are supposed to be asking hard questions and thinking about hard things. And I want you to think for yourself. And down here, I'm going to skip. If you come away from anything, if you come away from this class with anything, I want it to be that you think for yourself, that you don't just swallow hook, line, and sinker, what somebody says just because they say they're a pastor, because they say they're called by God, because they say whatever, okay? Uh, you know, uh, uh, anybody can say that. You need to think about it for yourself. I'm not saying don't respect them. I'm just saying think about it for yourself and decide whether this is a person you can really listen to or not. Are they treating the Bible properly? Are they thinking about everything they need to think about when they teach the Bible? Or are they kind of just going off the cuff and trying to build a big church? Okay. We operate under the Irish rules. What in the world does that mean? Um, we'll talk about this a little bit more later, but here's the short version. Just like there are a lot of rough things in the Hebrew Scriptures, um, I will from time to time tell you that there are some really good movies, stories, books out there that you may enjoy reading if your parents decide you're old enough to read them. Um, this came about really because when my son was learning how to play guitar, I wanted him to watch a certain Irish movie. The Irish movie holds that I wanted him to watch, which is a great movie about music, I think holds the records for the most cuss, cuss words like per minute of any movie that's ever been made, or it might be like in second place now. So that was a problem, right? Because I'm trying to raise my child as a, as, 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 a, as a Christian, and he's about 10 at this time. But I decided to let him watch the movie, and I just told him, look, we're not going to talk like that. It's a part of this movie. It's a, a certain part of culture because I, it's just a fact that you read. Look, I love Irish literature. I love Irish movies and Irish music. But there are just, they cuss constantly. Okay, fair enough. Part of that culture. But we try to teach our children and our youth and our adults that we're not going to talk that way, right? So just realize that. So, so I, may, I may talk about a movie or a book or something like that that's very kind of adult or that's got cuss words in it or, you know, that may be dealing with, with harsh topics. Just roll with me on that, okay? And I'm not going to tell you to go read it, but 
it might be something that you want to talk to your parents about. You know, when is the right time for me to read something like that? Again, we'll be sensitive about this. You notice I haven't even said the name of the movie. Uh, but, you know, those are what I call the Irish rules. Sometimes it's worth it to help you think for yourself, for you to, to read some of those things and just understand, okay, I'm not going to talk like they talked. I'm not going to act like they acted. I don't want you acting like a lot of people in the Bible acted. But we are going to read those stories. Okay? Independence. Think for yourself. I've already mentioned that. That's the most important thing in this class. Think for yourself having this biblical literacy, understanding kind of where all of this stuff comes from, and then put it in your brain, let it stew there for a while, and come up with your own conclusions. If you don't believe in God, if you don't believe in Christ because it really came from your heart, then it's never going to matter. If you do it just because mom and daddy and grandmom and granddaddy want you to, it's really never going to matter. It's got to be yours. I want you to make the Bible yours. Okay? Um, and then, last thing I'll say, run from those who act like they know it all about God. If I ever act like that, tell me I'm crazy and then run far and fast. If Pastor Trey ever acts like that, run far and fast. Anybody who tells you they can put God in a box or put God in a bottle, um, that they know all about Him, run, because they don't. Knowing God is a lifetime pursuit. I'll tell you another little thing my son taught me. He said when he was in college, and, and he's, a, he's, a, he's an artist now, and he said, you know, when I really started studying art, I realized that when I'm 75, I may begin to understand how deep art is. It's the same with the Bible. You don't have to know all that to be a Christian. You don't have to know all that to be saved. But, but understanding God, understanding the Bible is a lifetime pursuit. And, and your former teachers have started you on that path. And now we want to take you and make it more of even a, a, an adult type of exercise. Okay? So that you can stand there, rightly dividing the word of truth, as Paul said, and come to your own understanding of God and your own relationship with God. Okay, thanks. Thanks for listening, and um, see you again soon. <music>